good afternoon everyone and this is our orchard project so here on site at Langton Girls Grammar School we have a nature reserve to which we call the orchard just to make it a bit simpler and this is our orchard project and here we have several aims in our project firstly is to increase the biodiversity and to contribute to the um, conservation of our own nat native species on site as well as to improve the reserve so it can be used as a place for learning as well as leisure for the rest of the school and most importantly, we wanted to investigate the direct impact of biodiversity on the well-being of our students here in terms of the physiological impact, um, benefits and psychological be benefits as well. So um, there's many reasons to maintain a high level of bio biodiversity. Firstly, the survival of the human race depends on this. Quite frankly, we will die if we don't do this, so it's important. And secondly, there's also agricultural and economic importance. So having just one area of monoculture will not be exactly beneficial either. And also thirdly, there's also future benefits and to improve our own scientific understanding as well. So, to make sure that our nature reserve actually have a bi high biodiversity, we've done some work on it. So, we've um, dug up a pond, um, woodland walks, as well as some summer flowering meadows. So, our project and the research aim is to investigate the impact of being in a high, um, experiencing outside areas of high biodiversity compared to one that's lower and we see whether there are any impacts. All right, so um, to start off the study, we had to actually establish that our nature reserve was more biodiverse. Sounds like a bit of a silly question, but um, we had to prove it, otherwise all our data would be, uh, would be pointless. Uh, thankfully for us, we had uh, Dr. Ed Turner come down from Cambridge uh, to come and show us several sampling techniques that we could use to establish whether our nature reserve was more biodiverse. And from that, we got these results. Uh, the bar graph on the left shows all the separate sampling methods used comparing our nature reserve to an open area of land, so we use the school field. Uh, the blue represents uh, the orchard, the nature reserve, and the orange represents uh, the school field. Uh, for every sampling technique, apart from the quadrat, but we'll get to that later, uh, the orchard was far more biodiverse. Uh, when looking at the quadrat, uh, it's important to look at the graph on the right-hand side. Uh, with the field, it's very planned out. Every time you lay a quadrat down, you're likely to find three, four, maybe even five separate species of plants. However, those are the only plants that are there on the field, and there, there aren't any trees at all. I know trees are a plant, but you know, continuing with it. Uh, so on the far right, we're looking at the orchard. Much a higher abundance of separate species, but of course, when it's sectioned out like a meadow or a bramble, when you put a quadrat down, you might only find one species, but in the entire area, there are far more. So I think we were, we were pretty satisfied with uh, the orchard area being more biodiverse. So uh, with that established, we moved on to doing our actual uh, experiment, and our experiment aim was to establish that being in a more biodiverse area is more beneficial for student health. We tested over 600 individuals uh, by taking blood pressure readings and measuring anxiety using the state trained anxiety index, but that's uh, Lauren's section, so I won't talk about that just yet. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the blood pressure. We divided all our individuals into three groups. Uh, they all went on a 400 meter walk, one around the orchard, one around uh, the school site and one on the field. And uh, mm, these are our results. These are our blood pressure results. So uh, systo uh, systolic blood pressure was taken before the walk and after the walk. And the graph uh, shown is the mean difference in systolic blood pressure for people who already had a high uh, starting blood pressure. We uh, decided the cutoff this was uh, 120 millimeters of mercury uh, for high blood pressure in, in uh, young people. I think we read a, a study on it, which was, uh, that was the cutoff. Uh, we decided this because uh, people with already low uh, blood pressure 
probably wasn't the best idea to decrease it even further. So we were, we were just looking at people who were, uh, had high blood pressure. And unfortunately, I can't tell you that this data is statistically significant because I'd be lying to you. But I think we can all see with the uh, lines of standard deviation that if you walked in a biodiverse area, it was incredibly, incredibly unlikely that if you already had high starting blood pressure, that your blood pressure would uh, increase. We found 139 individuals with already high starting blood pressure. I don't know what that's telling you about a school environment, but uh, <laughs> not sure it's uh, too beneficial. Um, so although I can't give you a test and say this is statistically significant, I think it's really important to see that if you're going to go and walk in an area, if you want to help your blood pressure, the best place to go is in a biodiverse area. Uh, and I'm going to hand you over to Lauren. She's going to take you through the psychological impacts of it. So thank you. Thank you, Dan. Okay, so now if we go on to the psychological measures of well-being, we use something called the state trait anxiety index, which is a measure of self-reported well-being in that present moment. So it comprises of s um, statements such as I feel tense or I feel calm, and then participants rate their agreement on a scale of one to four. Uh, with a higher score indicating higher level of self-reported well-being. And with our mean, we found that the orchard produced the highest increase in self-reported well-being compared to the track in the school. And the difference between the orchard and the track was actually statistically significant, so suggesting that biodiversity might have been what has caused the, or been associated with that improvement. And then when we go on to the... Um, the results for different age groups, we find that the orchard had the highest increase for every year group. But the school, on the other hand, although it did produce a small increase, so suggesting that um, exercise alone did improve self-reported well-being, it wasn't always the case. So for the year 12s, their mean didn't change at all. And for the year 7s, their mean actually decreased after walking through the school. And another area of interest is looking at the age differences. So we find that for the lowest score, so year seven, eight, and nine, it didn't make much of a difference. But then as you go off to the upper school, it seems to make a real difference for their well-being. So we think from that that the upper school may have been more stressed. And so walking through the orchard and being out of lessons is what's making that real difference to their well-being. And when we look at the mean in general, we find that it wasn't just a few students pulling the mean up, it was actually that more people reported an improvement in their well-being. And then when we go on to the, um, when we go on to the wider implications of our research, this is, there we are, this is our area of biodiversity on the map, and one of our students, Ben's research, has actually, in a geography project, he's found that that area is much more biodiverse compared to the surrounding areas of housing and monoculture. Um, and then, so to leave you with a final message, we think that this research is important because it just shows how important it is to conserve the natural environment, not only for the ecosystem, but also for our mental health, which is something we don't seem to account for enough these days. And if not for this generation, then also for future generations to come, because as we said earlier, no one will care about what they haven't experienced. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I was reading something really interesting recently uh, about a Japanese practice that translates as forest bathing. Have you heard about that? What? Yeah, yeah, um, and there's been lots of stuff recently about, you know, the effect of green spaces on, on all those sorts of things. So it's really interesting to see it kind of quantified and, and being done in school. Um, any questions from anybody? There's a couple. Great stuff. Um, let's take this ladies here. Yeah, thank you. So what would you recommend to all of us about trying to keep a higher biodiversity? Because it seems like it's beneficial for all of us. Yeah, so it's beneficial for all of us. What can we do to help? Well, I think really what we'd recommend is uh, getting public buildings to set up areas of high biodiversity. I know a few hospitals are uh, trying this already. Uh, we had Benindine Hospital. Uh, they use a similar practice uh, for their patients. So I think what we're really recommending at the end of the day is where there's large areas of people, and I think this setting is a perfect, <laughs> perfect example of this, is just to have more areas of high biodiversity 
that people can walk through, and that's really, uh, really it, I think. And it's also not just the establishments that can help improve biodiversity in urban areas, for example, but also people every day can do things to help improve. So, for example, at the school, we're doing, students are actually doing, they're helping planting trees and um, digging up the ponds, and so we are actively um, helping improve the natural environment, and the members of the public can do that too in their own gardens. Um, yeah. <laughs> Also, surely we can, during lunch breaks or something like that, go out and find those spaces and go for a walk through them, right? Um, cool. Was there another one over there? So you've shown that the orchard definitely changes blood pressure, for example. But how do you know that it's because of the increase in biodiversity? Why can't it just be because it's a prettier place? Mm. That's, yeah, actually, that's a really good question. And uh, that's something the whole project was trying to overcome because a lot of people will think exactly the same thing. Uh, the way we tried to establish this is by measuring the field. The field is really uh, what we compare the orchard with because it is also an outside space. The difference between the field and the orchard is not how long you spend there or the size of the area, it is the biodiversity. It, I mean, they're in hundreds of meters of each other. It's, it's not the location, it's what's actually in the area, the biodiversity. So yeah, no, really good question, but I think, uh, I think, I think I've got the right answer. <laughs> <laughs> and then going on from that, another interesting thing that we could do further is perhaps in our study, we could maybe compare natural environments to art galleries or something. So that could be an idea for future research. Well, any more? Was there another hand up? Uh, can we take one in the back, in the middle? Given that your research uses the pupils from your school and given that they are, I assume, aware of the project that's been running for a couple of years now, how reliable do you think your data is? That's a very good question. Okay, so that, yes, that is a good question. And so things like the state trait anxiety index are self-report measures, so they're quite subjective. So um, people may lie to prevent concern from other teach from other pupils or teachers. Um, but we try to control that by using a physiological measure, so blood pressure in this case, um, because the body doesn't lie, um, as you <laughs> whereas people may when they're reporting their own well-being. And we're also trying to look into another measure of physiological well-being. We're also looking into doing cortisol uh, measures, but I'm not really sure how far we've gone into that yet. Was that what you wanted to add? Be, yeah, obviously, you were talking about the rel reliability of the data set. I mean, we've been doing this for over four years now, and more data sets being taken. So I do think the data is quite reliable, taking the means out, and the stats test does help the reliability. Yeah. Cool. Thanks very much. Uh, and, yeah, say this last one then at the back with you there. Thanks. Hi, do you think maybe the oxygen concentration in the orchard could be affecting the decrease in blood pressure and the decrease in stress? Could that be a factor? Well, it's interesting you mentioned that because uh, Lauren was talking about my geography project earlier. I'm going to plug myself here. I hope no one minds. <laughs> um, and actually, I studied uh, Canterbury area. I studied land use impacts uh, and its effect on the environment. And oxygen concentration if we're talking broad terms, doesn't really change uh, much particularly. Um, that's why I, I didn't use it in my study. Uh, so that could be a factor, but I think in the, uh, the grand scheme of things, the difference is so tiny, A, very difficult to, um, to measure and establish a link, uh, but maybe, maybe we should look into it next time. Maybe over the next four years, we'll, we'll choose something else. Thank you, Ben. Uh, and contractually, because she has to have the last word. <laughs> Thanks. Um, 
don't know. I just want to say there's obviously so much interest in this project. I'm so delighted that it's been the basis of this new wellbeing project which Iris is launching. So please keep in touch. This is a fantastic start. Well, they've done this amazing work which has enabled us to get going with this project. Please keep in touch with it. We will be launching a bigger project in the spring. So look on the website. We'll keep you informed. Look on the newsletter. This is something which is obviously going to be a great interest across the years in school, across all schools, and for everybody's well-being. So thank you, folks. Great stuff. Thank you very much.